Come on and praise the Lord, everybody. Clap your hands. Give God some praise. Come on, let's clap our hands. Oh, he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord shall be praised. I will lift up mine eyes toward the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord for he is great and greatly to be praised oh magnify the Lord with me let us exalt his name together for the mercy of the Lord endures forever and ever and ever oh come on and clap your hands church and praise the Lord name of the Lord is a strong tower. Oh my God. How many of you feel like having church just for a little while? Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I feel like having church just for a little while. There's a storm out on the ocean. And it's moving this away. If your soul's not anchored in Jesus, you will surely drift away. Help me sing. There's a storm out on the ocean. And it's moving this away. If your soul's not anchored in Jesus, you will surely drift away. Oh, there's a storm out it's on the ocean, and it's moving this away. If your soul's not anchored in Jesus, you will surely drift away, drift away, drift away. You will surely drift away if your soul's not anchored in Jesus. Surely. Oh, there's a storm out on the ocean, and it's moving this way. If your soul's not. Anchored in Jesus, you will surely drift away. Oh, drift away, drift away. You will surely drift away. If your soul's not anchored in Jesus, you will surely. I'm a soldier, I'm a soldier, I'm a soldier, I'm a soldier, if I die, let me die, if I die, let me die, if I die, let me die. If I die, let me die. I got my war clothes on. I got my war clothes on. I got my war clothes on. War clothes on. Woo! Come on and put them hands together and praise him like he's been good to you all week long. I'm a soldier, I'm a soldier, 
I'm a soldier, soldier. My God. Woo. War clothes on. War clothes on. I said, God is a good God, you say. I say God is a good God. I say God is a good God. God is a good God. You say, oh yes he is. Yes he is. Yes he is. Oh yes he is. Yes he is. Yes he is. Yes he is. Oh yes he is. Yes he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. God bless you. God bless you. I see we got a handful of folk that came to have church. Amen. We got a handful of folk that came to have church. Turn and look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't know what you came to do, but I come to praise the Lord. Amen. All right, all right, we, there's a couple of places, and please excuse me, uh, there are some anniversaries that are going on, uh, and he that hath friends must show himself friendly. Uh, Pleasant Green and Christ Temple in Ashland. We can't be in two places at one time, but we surely want to show our support to both of those places. I personally am going to be going to Ashland this afternoon, but at the same time, I want to show the people at Pleasant Green, amen, that we appreciate uh, Pastor Needy in his uh, first year of pastoring. I know you hear it, you've heard it for years about how difficult that pastoring is. Uh, and it is, it's the truth. It, it, it is the truth. Uh, and so we do want to go and show him our support. So we're not going to be long before you today uh, because we want to go over there and just to let them to know that we love them. Uh, but I feel this song in my heart. Oh yes he is, yes he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Every day of my life. Every day of my life. Every night of my life. God's been good. God's been good. I said God is a good God. You say God is a good God. God is a good God. Second. Second Samuel, Second Samuel, chapter number nine. Second Samuel, chapter number nine. Been praying for you all week long. Twenty-three. 
turn to somebody and say, if you don't pray, you can't stay. And if you don't fast, you won't last. Amen. I know folks have been selling fish. Sometimes you got to turn that fish sandwich over. Praise the Lord. Amen. You got to turn that chicken and greens and green beans and corn pudding. You got to turn it over sometimes. Paul said, I mortify this flesh and bring it under subjection. How many of you know that we need to hear from the Lord? We've witnessed, we've witnessed at them a high scale the things that Jesus said would come. We've witnessed uh, false prophets. It's at a high level right now. We've witnessed the pestilence for the past two years. People have been held captive by coronavirus. COVID-19. We witnessed it. The whole world knows about it. We witness wars, rumors of wars. We have a war going on now. The whole world knows about what's taking place over there in Ukraine. So there's two things that we have not yet seen that is getting ready to be on display and that is an earthquake so widely known that everybody's going to know about it. And then there's going to be famine, not only the famine that they're experiencing over there in Africa that they've been experiencing for years, but one in which that everybody's going to know about it. For this gospel must be preached throughout the world then will come the son of man so let us watch and pray keep our eyes on Jesus the author and finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him despised the shame and endured the cross and unlike any other high priest whose work was never done we have a great high priest who was able to say, I can sit down now. There was never the job of the priest to sit, but Jesus, our high priest, sat down on the right hand. Aren't you glad about it today? Aren't you glad that the blood still works, praise team? Second Samuel chapter 9 verses, I know we, we're looking at verses 1 through 5, but we're going to read down through verse 8, if that's all right with you. Second Samuel chapter 9 verses 1 through 8. Y'all going to be surprised when I say 15 minutes. It's going to be 15 minutes. Pull, pull my coattail. In 15 minutes. Yeah. And David said, Is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness <clears throat> for Jonathan's sake? Uh, if I could stop there, I'll let you know that that is true grace. That's what grace is. It is salvation that is given to someone else for the sake of another. That's grace. I know it's God's unmerited favor. But it is that salvation that was given to us on behalf of someone else. And that is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? amen? And there was of the house of Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. And when they had called him unto David, 
the king said unto him, Art thou Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is he. And the king said, Is there not yet any of the house of Saul that I may show the kindness of God unto him? And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan hath yet a son which is lame on his feet. And the king said unto him, Where is he? And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he is in the house of Micaiah, the son of Amiel, in Lodabar. Now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come unto David, he fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth, and he answered, Behold, thy servant. And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake, and will restore thee all the land of Saul thy father, and thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant that thou shouldest look upon such a dead dog as I am? Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. We pray for your anointing. We thank you for it. Now anoint the ears of the hearers, even those who are tuning in via Facebook or YouTube. Those that are here, Lord, under the sound of our voice, call someone to change. Oh, help somebody come and make an intelligent decision by giving you their life to come to this altar and lift up holy hands and say, I want to be born again. Oh, God, we know that thou art able. We trust you. We believe you. We lean on you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Before you take your seat, look at somebody. Verse number eight, once again, and it says, and he bowed himself and said, what is thy servant? that thou shouldest look upon such a dead dog as I am. Look at somebody and say to them, neighbor, can we take another look at it? Wrong neighbor. Look at somebody else and say, neighbor, can we take another look at it? Put your hands together and give God a praise. For some who may not know the background, and we're going to move fast, for some who do not know the background of this particular story uh, in the scripture, you have to understand David uh, is king of Israel at this time. Prior to David being king of Israel, he was on the run because he was anointed of God to be king of Israel. But prior to him becoming king, there was already a king uh, in Israel. His name was Saul. Saul spent 12 years trying to find David in the wilderness, in caves, that he may slay David because the anointing of God was upon him. Now you've got to imagine David ran for all this time in wildernesses and in the caves and was hidden from Saul because Saul was out to kill David. Note there, when you are anointed of God, the enemy tries to pursue you and to destroy you any way, shape, or form that he can. However, Saul had a son, the same Saul who was trying to kill David, which was David's best friend. His name was Jonathan. Jonathan and David's, their souls were knitted together. Jonathan came to David one time uh, to strengthen his hand while he was out in the wilderness to encourage David, David to keep on holding on and to never forget about him. So now that David is king, David keeps his word with Jonathan, although Jonathan and Saul have been killed in war against the Philistines. When Saul is killed, David now gets the kingdom that was promised to him and anointed upon him by Samuel, by God. 
Now, understand, just because now that David is king doesn't mean that he can do whatsoever that he wants to do. He still has to be led of God. When David becomes king, he does not forget the covenant that he made with Jonathan, his brother in the spirit. We, not, we must not forget about one another when the Lord takes us to a different level. When he takes you to a higher height and when he takes you to a deeper debt, it is important for us to remember from whence we came from. Understand this also that when someone else became king in place of another, then what they would do during those days was to make sure that any male in that other bloodline would be destroyed because they, didn't, they would not want them rising up against them. If he became king, amen, and he was king prior, then all of his male descendants, he would pursue after them to make sure that none of them would rise up against him to take his kingdom. David is king, and now we find in our text he is asking about Saul and Jonathan's descendants. Well, of course, you would think that he is looking for them, that he might destroy them in case they would rise up against him. But that is not the case in David because David, the Bible tells us, was a man after God's own heart. Can you say amen? Which meant that David was a repentant man. When he done wrong, he asked the Lord to forgive him. That's the duty that we have as people of God today. When we do wrong, we can make our petitions known to God, and we ought to repent every day. Amen. Because there may be something that we have done in that day that was considered sin. Uh, uh, sometimes we go through a day and we may not even know that we have sinned, but we need to ask God for forgiveness anyway. Can you say amen? All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I believe I have about 10 more minutes. Many people live in a state of loneliness. Can you say amen? Out of the mainstream of society they live with no social activity or friendships outside themselves. A lot of people may call them hermits or, amen, just people who are loners, if you will. Then there are others who live right in the middle of life's hustle and bustle. Yet and still they find themselves alone, dislocated, and misunderstood. They are misunderstood and dislocated both physically and psychologically. People are and will be alone. That's part of living. From the orphan to the megastar surrounded by thousands People sometimes psychologically still are alone. From the homeless to the struggling single mother, people are alone and forgotten. Loneliness, forgottenness. Lodabar is such a place. We find the young man who is the descendant of Saul the son of Jonathan, David's best friend, in a place of despair. Lodabar itself, it means a place of loneliness. It is a place that means no thing, no pasture, no word. Such was this dwelling place, a man of this man called Mephibosheth, he lived in the place where there was no pasture. 
He lived in a place that had nothing going for it. And he lived in a place that means no word. Can you imagine how he was going to ever know anything about the goodness of God when there was no word? On top of that, the Bible says he was laying at his feet. For when there was war that was going on, his nurse picked him up. When the Philistines had defeated Jonathan and Saul, the nurse ran with Mephibosheth, who was around five years old at the time. While she was running, she dropped him and he was lame at his feet. He became lame in the drop. Praise the Lord. And so there was no doctor that could help him. There was no physician. There was nobody. He had to deal with the condition that he had. Understand now, he's lame. He needs somebody to take care of him. Not only is he lame, but he's living in a place of despair where there is nothing, no pasture, and no word. That is a pretty bad place to be living in. Somebody in here today, you may find yourself in despair. You may find yourself in a state of loneliness. And though you may have friends and you may be surrounded by those friends from time to time, they cannot know what is going on psychologically within you. Uh, they can't understand uh, your thoughts and what you're thinking. Uh, some people, praise the Lord, uh, are suffering from a great deal of spiritual loneliness today. They're, they're, they're suffering from spiritual loneliness. Help me, Holy Ghost. Because there is no word that has been dumped into them. And they're laying on their feet, which means they can't walk before God because they don't know how to walk because they haven't had word to teach them how to walk. And so aimlessly they're in the world and they're suffering and they don't know that there is hope that is all around them and hope is found in Jesus. Jesus, my brothers and sisters, today is the only answer for this world today. I got a phone call last night from a police officer, a friend of mine, and said, we had another homicide. It seems as if though killing nowadays means nothing to some of the people behind the killings. Life just doesn't seem to mean much. If life doesn't mean anything to you, uh, if your life doesn't mean anything to you, then it's not going to be difficult for you to take the life of another. What is wrong? The individual is laying on their feet. Uh, they're in a place of despair called Lodabar where there is no word. And so the question is today, is there any balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? And the answer is yes. There is a bomb in Gilead, and yes, there is a physician there. Imagine young Mephibosheth. He has grown a little now, teenage years now. He is still lame on his feet, and he is in a place where there is nothing going on. He is in a place without a temple, a place without a synagogue, a place where there's no grain and there's no substance. There's no harvest in the spring and in the fall. He is there, my brothers and sisters, and he's not hearing 
about the goodness of God. He doesn't have a priest to tell him about the law and the ordinances of God. He has not been told like a lot of other young people his age about how God had delivered his people out of the land of Egypt. You see, sometimes folk got to hear of a testimony of where God has brought you from. And when somebody can hear that God done it for you, then they can believe if God done it for them, then maybe he can do it for me. For the Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. The Bible lets us to know that we overcome by our testimonies and the blood of the Lamb. Look at somebody and tell them, neighbor, God can do it for you. David now, in our text, he asks about this young man who is the son of Jonathan. Uh, though Jonathan is dead, David is going to keep his word. David is a type of Christ in our text today. He is a promise keeper. He's looking for someone, and it doesn't make any difference where they are and what their condition is. He is not looking for them as some men may have thought to harm them, but he's looking for them that he might extend grace and salvation. Uh, he's looking for somebody that is in this place today. I stop by to tell you, turn to your neighbor and say he's looking for somebody in here today. Uh, somebody in here today that he may extend grace and salvation for you because somebody down the road has called out your name. They have called out your name and said, Lord, why don't you save them? Why don't you deliver them and why don't you help them? And I want you to know that God is still in the prayer answering business. I got about five more minutes and then we'll be leaving out of here. Now my brothers and sisters understand that David asks, is there any in the lineage of Saul, any of the house of Jonathan? I want to show some favor to. And they were, they were hesitant at first to let David know. Uh, but David being king, if you did know and didn't let him know, you could be beheaded. And so David said, is there anybody? And they said, Ziba knows somebody. Uh, and they said, bring Ziba to David. So they bring Ziba to David and David said, Ziba is there any of the house of Saul that I may show kindness to? And Ziba said, yes there was somebody by the name of Mephibosheth. He is the son of your best friend Jonathan. He is down there in Lodabar. What do you mean in Lodabar? Ain't nothing good coming out of Lodabar. That's what some people would have thought, but that's not how God looked at you. When you were in a place, I'm preaching now, when you were in the place of despair, can anybody look back over their life and see where God brought you from? When you were in a state of loneliness and forgottenness, when you were a wretch, unclean and undone, when you couldn't put down the bottle, when you couldn't stop chasing around that man or that woman, when you couldn't put down the crack pipe, when you couldn't stop selling the dope, when you couldn't, couldn't stop lying and cheating and stealing, God was not looking for you to destroy you. But God was looking for you to deliver you. I want you to know that there is hope for everybody in here today. I told you I'm finished. There's hope for everybody in this place today. Yes, you've had a load of our experience. Turn to your neighbor. It's safe to give somebody a high five now and say to them, neighbor, I've been in Lodabar, but God brought me out of Lodabar. 
Oh yes, I was in bad shape. I was a sinner seeking deep in sin. I might not be in the right church today. I was far from the peaceful shore. Very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. Where were you at? I was down in Lodabar. Is there anybody in here today that can lift up your hands, throw your head back, and say, Lord, I thank you for where you brought me from. You brought me from a mighty long way through hard trials and tribulations. I want to say thank you for your delivering power. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout glory. Somebody lift your hands up again. Shout thank you, Jesus. Well, is there anybody here that knows that God is still in the delivery business? If you want to be delivered today, God can deliver you. God will find you. God knows where you are. All you got to do uh, is get up on your feet, uh, walk down the aisle, and say, Lord, what can I do uh, to be born again? I know you're in a place like Lodabar. You're lonely. You're in despair. You seem forgotten. Uh, but I've come by to tell you that God uh, has not forgotten you. Somebody shout, yeah. Somebody shout, yeah. Somebody shout, yeah. Why don't you clap your hands and give God some praise? Well, I got to go. But before I go, there's a story of another man from a bad, a bad place. This man was blind. He couldn't see. And they only wanted Jesus to perform miracle after miracle after miracle. They didn't want to hear what Jesus had to say. They just wanted a miracle. So Jesus refused to be a bread king and just give him miracle after miracle. So when this man was brought to Jesus, the Bible said Jesus took him by the hand and led him outside the city. Then the Bible tells us that Jesus spit in the man's eyes. When he spit in the man's eyes, he asked the man and said, tell me now, what do you see? The man said, I see men as trees. My brothers and sisters, this is the only miracle in the Bible that Jesus performed progressively. Every other miracle was just like that. It was deliverance just like that. But this is a progressive miracle. So he then, the Bible says, laid his hands on him. And Jesus asked the question, now tell me what do you see? The man said, I see see men as men. So I've come by to tell y'all, help me out over here. I to tell you that you may not get your miracle all in one day, but wait on the Lord. It's coming after a while. Somebody tell your neighbor, say neighbor, I've been blessed and highly favored. But tell that same neighbor, say neighbor, you ain't seen nothing yet. He going to keep on blessing you. Your miracle is on the way. I come to tell three people that today your miracle is on the way. If you believe it's you, lift up your hand and say me, Lord. Say it. Uh, Say yeah. Say yeah. I'm getting ready to come to my close. If any of you watch, if any of you watch basketball, uh, you know that the players, they give a sign. And I want you to take this sign with you. If I commit a foul against you and you're doing that old spin move that you used to do, 
and I foul you. You call the foul, but I say I don't think that I fouled you. So they go to the referee and they do like this. Why don't you just wave your hand like this? This means referee, I did not foul him. He goes to the coach and says, he does like this, which means let's do a replay and take another look at it. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, let's take another look at it. For when I look back over my life, I want to say, Lord, I want to thank you. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, why don't you wave your hand? Say, let's take another look. I want to look back from how it brought me. Look back how he robbed me. Look back how he saved me. Look back. Look back. God did it for me. If he did it for you, say yes. If he brought you out, say yes. If he ever healed your body, say yeah. Say yeah. Everybody on your feet right now. Oh. Turn to somebody and say, neighbor, I just came out of Loda Bar. And I feel like praising him. You don't know where he brought me from. You wasn't there when he delivered me. You don't know like I know. I've come from a long way. I've come from a long way. They said we wasn't going to make it. But God has brought us this far. Say yeah. Come on, let's put our hands together and praise the Lord. Oh, yes. Oh yes, I've come out of Loda Bar. I'm coming out, I'm coming out. I'm coming out, I'm coming out. Yeah, I got a word, I'm coming out. I'm coming out. Anybody want to be saved? Anybody want to be saved? We got water here. Listen to me. Listen to me. We got water here. Repent of your sins. Repent of your sins. We got water here. We'll take you down in the name of the Lord Jesus. And God will fill you with the Holy Ghost. That's a promise. You don't have to stay in Lodabar. If there is one today that wants to come, who wants to start all over again, I want you to come. You got to come quickly. The waters are troubled. Come quickly. If somebody's in your way, just say, excuse me. Come on, young man, young woman. Come on, come on. Come on, man. Come, come, woman. Come, boy or girl. Come. Come just as you are. You don't have to have any money. You can come without money or price. Just as you are. Will there be one? Will there be one? Come on out of Lowly Bar.
to God. What a word, what a word. Hallelujah. Come on and give God praise for the word of God. Hallelujah. That gives life and that more abundantly. Amen. 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 Well, we're still in worship. At this time, we're going to ask our deacon if he will come. And we're going to, so that you can give of your substance to the Lord. Amen. Amen. God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. We want to thank you for worshiping with us today and those that are streaming with us through whatever social media you have chosen. We thank you for joining us this morning. Amen. We trust that the word of God has lifted you and that if you're in Lodabar, you can come out. Amen. 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 